Good evening. Thank you. Welcome to this Ash Wednesday worship service with the Presbyterian Church of Tom's River. I'm Robbie Itterberg, one of the pastors, and want to greet folks who are certainly here in the room as well as those joining us online. We're so glad to be able to worship together, even in these strange days, with the confidence that no matter where we are, that as we gather in, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he has promised to be present along with us. And so be assured that God is with you and with all of us this evening. We're here on Wednesday at the beginning of the Lent season, those 40 days leading up to uh, that Easter resurrection celebration. And it's really, this, this day is a uniquely, certainly Christian celebration, this Ash Wednesday. It, it begins this journey that we go on, a journey that mirrors the 40-day journey that Jesus had in the wilderness, in the desert, as he was tempted, being refined for the purposes, the ministry to which God the Father had called him. And so on this 40 days of our own journey, we are also making ourselves available, being intentional and saying, yes, God, I want to be available to whatever you want to do. Refine me for your good purposes that you're going to work out in my life as we reflect on Jesus' own journey to the cross, to the resurrection, and to our hope for today and every day. The, if you want to go further as we begin this journey this evening, if you want to continue to be intentional with this journey, one way you can do that is each Wednesday throughout Lent in the afternoon uh, on our Facebook page. There's going to be uh, an opportunity to explore this journey uh, more and intentionally. So if you're not connected to us on Facebook, it's PCTRNJ. I encourage you to go there uh, for a variety of other posts and opportunities along the way. Well, as we're entering into this time of worship together, let us be called to worship. Let us be invited into his presence, and I'll invite you to responsively join with me in our call to worship. You'll find the words on the screen coming from a variety of passages of scripture, but let us worship God together. Friends and neighbors, season of COVID-19, we pause to observe this Ash Wednesday together as a faith community. We remember that God made us from fragile, blessed dust and breathes through us the breath of life and love. From dust we are created in God's image. God's good dust we shall return. With dust and oil we claim the mark of God's beloved creature. Today we begin our 40-day Lenten journey to discover who we are created to be as God's beloved. In daily practices of prayer and service, we will embark upon this Lenten journey. We follow Jesus, God's beloved child, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, in whom we see God's image most clearly. So come, let us pray for strength and imagination to follow Jesus wherever he will lead us this Lent.
please be seated. We had a, a video meditation that I guess I'm not sure is coming up or is not coming up at this point based on Psalm 31. Oh, I'm getting the signal. I run to you, God. I run for dear life. Don't let me down. Take me seriously this time. Get down on my level and listen, and please, no procrastination. Be kind to me, God. I'm in deep, deep trouble again. My eyes out. I feel hollow inside. My life leaks away. Groan by groan, my years fade out in size. My troubles have worn me out, turned my bones to powder. To my enemies, I'm a monster. I'm ridiculed by the neighbors. My friends are horrified. They cross the street to avoid me. They want to blot me from memory. Forget me like a corpse in a grave. Discard me like a broken dish in the trash. The street talk gossip has me criminally insane. Behind locked doors they plot how to ruin me for good. Desperate, I throw myself on you. But there's also this, it's not too late. God's personal message, come back to me and really mean it. Come fasting and weeping, sorry for your sins. Change your life, not just your clothes. Come back to God, your God. And here's why, God is kind and merciful. He takes a deep breath, puts up with a lot. This most patient God, extravagant in love, always ready to cancel catastrophe. Maybe he'll do it now. Maybe he'll turn around and show pity. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken heart, one filled with regret and remorse. God will not despise. We are a broken people, trusting in God's mending ways. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Let's join together now in our responsive prayer of confession based on Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my, my iniquity. iniquity. Cleanse, cleanse me from, from my sin. sin. For I know I my transgressions and my, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. 
The bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. Take a moment now to silently add your personal prayers of confession. Amen. As part of our act of repentance and admitting that we need Christ's uh, forgiveness, we, on Ash Wednesday, uh, receive the ashes on our head to admit that we are broken inside and we live in a broken world. And so I invite you to come forward if you so feel comfortable doing this. No one is required to do this. But please try to maintain social distancing. I think we'll only have one row in the the middle here and come forward, come to Robbie or myself and then circle back around. And we will be using gloves and Q-tips, single-use Q-tip, put the ashes on people's forehead or your hand if you feel more comfortable with that. For those of you at home, I wish you were here and wish you could participate in the same way that we are here, but invite you to take a, a pen or, or something creative and maybe even put a, a cross on your hand. So I invite you to come forward as you feel comfortable.
When we confess our sins, God promises forgiveness. Join with me now in our responsive assurance of pardon that comes to us from Ezekiel. Hear the promise of God. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you will be clean from all your uncleanness, and from all of your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Friends, the promises of God are true. In Jesus Christ, Christ we are forgiven. forgiven. He himself bore our sins in his body and on the cross that we we might be dead dead to to sin sin and alive to all that is good. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Live now as new people, free to love God and neighbor. Amen. As our Lenten journey begins, we look inward to examine and prepare our hearts. We look upward to our Savior, Jesus Christ, who earned for us salvation. But we also look outward, to a world that is so in need of God's love and God's care and even to know the Lord. As we begin our Lenten journey, let's begin with generosity. If you brought a gift with you tonight, there's a place to put it on your way out in the box. If you did not and you would like to share in the journey, there are many ways that you can participate in that. You can mail a a check to our church. You can go online uh, to uh, pctr.org slash give. You can text a gift to the number that's on the screen, or you can go, on if you're on one of the live platforms, to click the word give, and that will explain how, to, how you can help us out. So if you are on this journey with us, what a great way to share God's wealth and God's abundance to all of us by sharing it with others. As we think about that, let us now pray. Gracious God, we ask you to come alongside of us on this Lenten journey to warm our generosity, to thaw our reluctance to give sacrificially, to empower us to serve you by serving others with energy and joy, and to stir the ashes within our hearts so that we might feel your power and strength as we share your gospel message. May these gifts change hearts and change lives. We pray all this to you, our Heavenly Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, I stretch my hands to you. should leave me all alone. Where then shall I go, O Lord? I give my soul to you. I seek your care and Sings too, I need but those from you above. Lord, I ask you, give me faith and help me understand. And Lord, when I this life shall leave, just hold me. I stretch my hands to you. No other help I know. If you should leave me all alone, where then shall I go, 
stretch my hands to you Amen And let us pray Dear Lord, as we have marked this time on this Ash Wednesday as the beginning of this, not just this season of Lent, but the beginning of a 40-day journey, a journey that will lead us to that incredible, grand celebration of Easter, your resurrection, and our source of ending days and forevermore. Lord, with each day on this journey, may you give us the grace to keep moving, but not just to keep moving forward, to keep moving with you, in pace with you, in step with you, and to move toward you. We know that unless you draw us, unless you draw us to yourself, none of us may come. We know that unless you give us eyes to see and ears to hear, that we will miss you and we will miss your purposes in our lives. We know that our desire for you is well intended, but often too weak to endure all that life throws at us. The busyness of our schedules, the mounting responsibilities, concerns over health, safety, relationships, and even just our distracted and distractible minds. Lord, especially in this time of pandemic, we find that our hearts and and even our thoughts are often living in and certainly pining for the future, longing for the end of this COVID journey. Lord, may you take this shorter journey that we offer to you, these 40 days of Lent, to cover us, to fill us with your gospel and your good news. May you grant us the gift of being present in the moment, not just longing for the future, aware of what is immediately before us, and your spirit guiding us each step of the way. Through these days and this journey, may we fix our eyes clearly on your Son, Jesus Christ, May we meditate deeply on his journey to the cross, his self-sacrifice, your extravagant love on display in his agony, your mercy, your forgiveness from sins through his blood. Lord, as we come to times of hardship throughout this journey, may you give us the strength to endure Give us the perspective to see your discipline in our lives at work, shaping us and calling us to be not just your children, but children that represent you, our Father, well. Lord, may you take these days ahead of us. Use them. We long for it not to just be like any other days, but we offer them to you that we may come to know you more may follow you with not just obedience, but joyful obedience, that we may may love you passionately, knowing how you have loved us. It's in the name of Jesus, based on his merits, his goodness, that we come before you, not our own, not our own worthiness, not our own goodness, but his alone. It's in his name we pray. Amen. I trust you sense the ache for human connection and human contact that I feel as well. 
even just coming into this building, we often used to do that with handshakes and hugs, and we're just feel that that's not safe right now. There's sometimes that awkwardness, or should we do a fist bump, or maybe an elbow, or, or something like that. But it, it's something in us that we are wired to make human contact. It, it deeply connects with us and allows us to connect with one another. God has wired us this way. We are souls enfleshed in, in, in the midst of that. He meets us in the midst of that in the sacraments. We have here the baptismal font. He meets us in the washing that we get to experience and see through baptism. We get to experience bread and wine through communion and experience a tangible feeling through that. And God meets us in the midst of that. And when we come to this day, Ash Wednesday, we have these ashes, and they're not a sacrament, but it's an opportunity to open ourselves up to connecting with God, to volunteer, to be, have, receive these ashes. The imposition is the word we use, the imposition of ashes on us. And it's a, it's a sign to us that has multiple meanings. Part of the sign is that we are admitting that something is broken in us and in our world. In biblical times, putting ashes or dust on oneself was admitting that something is broken, that something horrible has happened, and they would put ashes on themselves. And we come and receive these ashes as admitting that we need to repent, that we are broken, that we need what Christ offers us. And so we come to church on a Wednesday night and we receive these ashes as a sign that admitting that we want to respond, that we want to be more of who God calls us to be. And that's the ashes part, but there's also the sign that the cross, the sign of the cross that the ashes are put in. And that brings a meaning also. It, it, it's a, a, it lets us know that we are loved and that we are so loved that even though we might be broken, that we are so loved we are worth dying for. And that's what that cross symbolizes. It reminds us of Jesus' sacrifice to open up a new way to deal with the brokenness in our lives, that we would be able to be reconnected with God and through that connected with one another in healthier ways even being connected with ourselves. And as we respond to that and as we receive that, God calls us into a journey, a journey to continue on in that process. And our passage really picks up on that, and so I'm going to turn to that now. It comes from Hebrews chapter 12. It's the first several um, verses of that. Please listen for God's word for us tonight. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God, uh, the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son. It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If they are not disciplined... 
and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters of all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, in order that we may share his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Lord, I ask that you would open up your word to us. Might your spirit be here and guide us in these steps that we would come to know and see you more, fall more in love with you, that we would walk more closely with you, that we would better reflect the character of Jesus, our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. So, the writer of Hebrews envisions this race laid out for us. And this race takes place in the midst of a great cloud of witnesses. And if you're not sure what some of those witnesses are, I encourage you to read Hebrews chapter 11. It is kind of the hall of fame of the Bible the, where it has people of faith that have really exhibited it. And so I encourage you to take a look at it. it and so that part had been covered in chapter 11, and we have this therefore, this therefore surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. And it has this idea that we are surrounded by people of all times, and they encourage one another on this journey and on this race laid out for us. And it's a beautiful thing to think that those in the church that are alive today and those that have gone before and are enjoying God's presence now are there encouraging us and striving just as we are. And so we are faced with this challenge of running this race that's laid out for us and there's this encouragement to let go of everything that entangles us, the sin, and anyone that's run a foot race or, or done anything like that, you know you want to take off things that would restrict your movement and keep you from doing the best that you can. You would not want to run a race in a suit. You would want to get that coat off. You want to cast off any garments that would constrict tightly so that you can freely move and do your very best. And that image here is that we would let sin fall away. Sin like pride or lust or fear or, or any of these other things that can entangle us and keeping us from being all that God has called us to be so that we can follow in the footsteps of the one who is the author of our faith. That person is Jesus. Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith who went to the cross for us. He is like our pace setter in the midst of of this race that we continue on. This race that's not a sprint, but it's a long race. It, it requires endurance. And it's not a race that we would necessarily think that we want to try to break out of the pack or only the strong win or, or something like that. Not these modern cliches. It's the idea that we would just carry it out and follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And as we think about this, our connection with Jesus is key to this. He is our pacemaker, our, the pace setter, and he has led the way and gone to the cross. Our passage talks about how he endured it because he so cared, cared for us. And having done that, he has gone to be with God the Father there at the throne and seated in recognition of that. And we are to think on this as an encouragement when we grow weary. I thought on this passage as 
we come to Ash Wednesday and we think about the journey ahead, this 40 days of Lent, and the opportunity to move ahead into this space and into this time as a time to let go of the sin that holds us back and strive towards Good Friday and Easter, a time that reminds us of what has been done for us because we are so loved. And in doing so, we can better become what God has called us to be, to be transformed, to be uh, renewed, that we would get to experience life to the full. Jesus at one point says, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. And I hope that that is your experience in this time, in this Lenten journey. Consider what we have done. We have here with the cross and in confessing laid aside some of what ensnares us, what holds us back. Consider of let it go more as we strive on these 40 days to celebrate Good Friday and to celebrate Easter, that we would be closer to God, that we would be encouraged so that we would not grow weary and that we would not lose heart. One illustration for you. There was uh, a gentleman, he was a Scotsman by the name of Eric Liddell. He was um, at the first modern Olympics there in Paris, and he traveled there. And um, he has a famous quote. He said that God had built him fast. God made me fast, and when I run, I feel his pleasure. Eric was challenged um, when he went to that, those Olympics. He felt that it was um, a, a calling that he needed to honor the Sabbath and one of the qualifying events at that Olympics for one of his best um, events fell on a Sunday. And he had warned them, he said, I will not run on Sunday as an act of love for God. And he didn't, and he, he was not able to be a part of what he w- was, would have been considered the strongest contender in that event. He did have the opportunity to run in another event and did bring home a medal to Scotland and set a record that was incredible. But I think he's a good example of what it means to face the obstacles placed in our way, but running the race before us. And as we do, we can feel the pleasure of God as we do. Might you experience the pleasure of God as we pass through our Lenten journey. Please join me in prayer. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to run this race. You have laid it out for us. We ask that you would guide our steps, that you would help us to let go of that which entangles us, things that we might already be aware of, things that we might not be aware of yet. Lord, we ask that you would bring them to our attention. Maybe in, in kindness, Lord, I ask maybe perhaps not everything all at once, but at, at one by one, setting things aside, that we would be able to run this race and in doing so, feel your pleasure to be transformed, to be all that you have called us to be. We pray all of this. In Jesus' name, amen.
And so before I give you a benediction, I want to invite you to start off your journey, this Lenten journey, by passing through a labyrinth. A labyrinth is an old name for something like a maze. And we have one set up in Fellowship Hall. And so instead of going out the door through the music wing, you're invited to actually go back past the Welcome Center and into the Fellowship Hall and walk a labyrinth. The idea of a labyrinth is to kind of physically embody our spiritual journey, that there are challenges that lie before us, and it comes with twists and turns, but there can be encouragement along the way. And if you look, as you go through the labyrinth, there is encouragement from God's word there. And I invite you, if it resonates with you, you're welcome to pause and to contemplate what that might mean for you. And I encourage you to think about the journey ahead, these 40 days, how you can run the race and what that might look for you. Might this be a tangible beginning to your Lenten journey? And so, now I leave you with this benediction. You go into this Lenten journey not alone, but with the good shepherd who is there beside you every step of the way. And so go in the deep, deep love of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in love and peace to serve the Lord. Amen.